In this video, we will introduce the concept of the partial derivative. Let's suppose that f is a function of both x and y. When this happens, how do I find the derivative of f with respect to x? Well, first off, if we only want to know the change in f with respect to a change in x, that means we don't have to worry about a change in y. If that's the case, then what we're looking for is the partial derivative of f with respect to x. We're going to identify partial derivatives with this little squiggly d, sometimes called dou or do. The idea behind finding a partial derivative is to let x be your variable and then treat any other variable as a constant. For example, suppose that f is a function defined as x squared times y. And let's say that we want the partial derivative of f with respect to x. In this case, we can treat y as any constant. And because y is a constant, then our derivative simply becomes 2x times y. Now, what if we want to find the partial derivative of f with respect to y? In this case, dou f over dou y becomes the derivative of our constant x squared times y. And of course, our constant is just x squared, so dou f over dou y is just x squared. Now, this idea behind partial derivatives becomes very useful because many, many properties in fluid mechanics are going to be studied from a perspective that looks at them as functions of space and time, which means that most of your properties will depend on more than one variable. Now, before we continue, Let's talk a little bit about what a change in f, so df means, a total change, not a partial change. If we let f be a function of x and y, then a change in f, a small change in f df, will simply be equal to the partial change in f with respect to x times an infinitesimally small change in x plus the partial change of f with respect to y times an infinitesimally small change in y. In fact, this can apply for however many variables you have. If f had three variables, then we would apply this for all three of those variables. Let's keep that definition of a differential change in mind, because it will become helpful when we're applying additional rules, such as the chain rule. So what does the chain rule look like when we're using partial derivatives? Let's suppose that f is a function of x and y, where y is also a function of x. In this case, what is the change of f with respect to x? Notice that I'm not asking for the partial derivative of f, I'm actually asking for the total derivative or the total change of f with respect to x. Well, we can find this by using the chain rule. The chain rule tells us that df over dx will be equal to the change in f with respect to x, but in this case, we're looking at a partial change, times dx over dx, plus the change in f with respect to y, and once again, we're looking at a partial change, times dy over dx. Of course, you can see that this is just dou f over dou x plus dou f over dou y times dy over dx. Now, of course, if you remember our definition of what a differential change in f meant when it came to partial derivatives and multivariable functions, then notice that df over dx is simply equal to taking your small change df and then dividing it by dx.